I'm going to go ahead and change this to mouse over just to see if that makes any difference. Oh uh, yeah, we have. We've got that. Okay, so uh, let's try this. Yeah, okay, right, okay. So let me just explain how I fixed that and then uh, I'll tell you how stupid I am. So we've got focus in here. Um, we will change this to mouse over, which I guess is a better uh, event handler for this here. Uh, focus in would be for something like a text field uh, or a text area, you know, sort of anything like that. Uh, that we focus in either by clicking on or tabbing to. Mouse over is obviously we're using our mouse and we're going over an element. Uh, the other thing that I didn't do is I set, well, we'll, we'll see with just changing mouse over, uh, we don't have any div displayed. Uh, and this is because uh, using var here, uh, this title variable is belongs to this function here. Uh, and when we apply it in title in another function, uh, it's not globally available. So by removing var, we just have this title equals something, which means it's globally available to be used here. So when we refresh, uh, it's you know available and in, and it's uh, happily working again. So yeah, that was a bit long-winded, and we had a couple of problems with obviously dealing with the code, and I moved things around and changed things around. But you know, it goes to show that you probably got annoyed at you know some of you might have been shouting at the screen. But eventually we fixed it and it just goes to show that fiddling with things and, and thinking logically, which I'm obviously not, you know, just goes to help. So essentially now that we've created our plugin, uh, that's it. You know, we've we've outlined our plugin and, and we've used this and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We could go on to, for example, uh, change some kind of setting. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into defining uh, se settings sort of, you know, normally. But what happens if we wanted to uh, create a, say, Boolean parameter, which you would fade in um, or fa or not fade in? So we could supply, say, true to fade in or false not to fade in or just not supply it at all. So inside of here, what we want to do is we want to take a, a uh, parameter in our function. So we could say, for example, uh, fade. And what we could do is we could go ahead and instead of using show here, we could get rid of that. Uh, and we could create an if statement which would uh, supply, say for example, if fade equals equals true, uh, then we would want to say hash hover text dot fade in. And then we could fade it in, say fast or something. Um, otherwise, we could go ahead and say hash hover text dot show. So now what's happening is we're allowing uh, the user to sort of submit this parameter for fade which either can be either true or false. Uh, if it is equal to true then we fade in otherwise we could say if fade is equal to false then uh, show uh, or fade equals equals undefined. So uh, fade equals undefined would be to not supply it uh, we could say false anyway, and that would mean that we don't fade in. Uh, so let's just try it out first of all with nothing in here. Let's refresh and hover over. And something's gone wrong once again. Uh, let's just double check there. If fade is equal to true. Oh no, sorry, I've supplied this in the completely wrong place. No, I haven't. Uh, so function fade, uh, fade equals equals true. Maybe we do need to supply it in here, so lots of things are going wrong. No, not at all. Uh, let's just go back to plugin and let's double check this. Dot fade in dot show. Oh, sorry, else if. Okay, right, so you can really shout at the screen now. Okay, so now we've just got our normal showing, uh, you know, no animation going on. Uh, if I was to change this to false, we would also obviously get the same effect where nothing, nothing fades in. But if we change this to true, the parameter that we've taken, which is fade, uh, is set, obviously set to true now. So we fade in fast rather than just showing. Uh, so when we refresh, we actually just, you can see it sort of fading in. So it looks a bit nicer. So that's an example of just basic parameter passing or argument passing inside of your uh, plugin. Uh, there are much more advanced techniques. So go ahead to the jQuery documentation uh, and have a look at how you would uh, pass, you know, 
uh, more advanced option option variables uh, to your plugin but for now that's just a simple plugin we've spent you know longer than we should have probably debugging it but then again that's just life it does actually happen so uh, I hope you enjoyed creating uh, this kind of plugin uh, go ahead and feel free to start making your own plugins it's quite fun um, and I hope that that um, you know sort of helped you uh, with the fact that I couldn't actually write the code out and I was uh, you know messing around a bit but there we go that's that's it but yep your first plugin or you know something that's a bit more advanced than you might usually create uh, but nevertheless it works and it's quite